Numbers don't lie. You're looking at the best server in 2024. This is Hubert Hercats. We're going to be doing a serve analysis on him today. In 2023, he had 1,031 aces, which was number one on the tour. Another thing that he led in stats was first serve percentage of points won at 80%. He does some amazing things on his serve that I want you to copy. And I'm also going to show you at the end of the video how you can have perfect serve technique like her cats. So let's get into this video. Okay, so I really love this guy's serve. I think there's so many things that you should copy. First of all, take a look at just his relaxed position here. He is leaning forward in a relaxed position, but you can already see he's getting ready to lift up his toe, which is kind of like Sampras does, or did. And so now his weight is on his back foot. But again, look in the beginning how he's kind of leaning in forward. Kind of reminds me of Nick Kyrgios, how he leans in forward. And here's this another thing that you can tell a good player from a recreational player. Look at how his strings are facing up to the sky. Right? They're tilted up to the sky. So if you don't do that right away, you might have the wrong grip. So make sure that your grip is like that as well. I like how he's just kind of like leaning over in a nice relaxed state. When you're serving, you want to feel like your body almost feels like spaghetti. It, it, the, the wind can almost blow it. You're just so loose with it. You don't want to feel tense. So you can bet that his hand is nice and relaxed as well, his dominant hand. All right, now, when he goes into his first move, we can see he rocks back and lifts up his toe. This is going to enable him to press and use his kinetic chain with his back foot into the ground. So now he's got all his weight on his back foot. It's a nice little rock back motion. A lot of great servers rock back into that first move, lift up the toe. Now here's the first really interesting thing. I like to talk about the weak wrist a lot in my serve reviews. And we can see that he, the way he's doing it is kind of interesting. It's a different one. Haven't really seen this much. But you see how he's actually got his strings facing into his stomach here. So the strings are actually facing right into his stomach. A lot of recreational players at this point, they would flip back and op start to open up their strings. That would put you into a waiter tray position. So as he continues to rise up, again, look how he keeps the strings facing right into his chest. Very interesting. And his wrist is in a nice, relaxed position here okay you see I like I like to call this what he's doing although he does it a little bit differently than a lot of other pros but it's kind of like bowing down like that you see that if you can create that little gooseneck move with your wrist that's gonna enable you to have a lot of racket head speed a lot of whip through the shot and he's getting ready to go into something that that I call the secret power source. And I think that he has the most pronounced, it kind of reminds me of Roddick, the most pronounced secret power source I've seen. And what do I mean by this? Look at how the strings again, and if you're a recreational player watching this from 3.0 to 4.0 level, there's a good chance that you don't do this. So this is maybe the number one thing you want to copy that he does. Look at how the strings are facing downwards. He really has that racket face downwards. We're going to take another look at another angle too here in a second so you can really see how much he faces those strings down. And that's going to enable him to have a lot of racket at speed, make sure he doesn't go into the waiter tray position like a lot of recreational players do. So really exaggerate that move. And then you can see another great trait that recreational players can copy from the pros is all pros are going to have their toss arm arm as straight as they can be. A nice little stretch here in the side. Feel that nice stretch. So you can really reach up for the ball. That's what he does so well. And then he's coming down. Now, another thing that you can practice at home is focus on your thumbnail. So right now, if he were to turn around and look back, he would see his thumbnail facing in towards his back. You would see your thumbnail. Watch how long we would see the thumbnail. So this is a great little exercise you can do, a shadow swing exercise you can do, 
is throughout your whole swing, watch as he comes around. Now, if he were to look up instead of looking at the ball, what would he see? He would see his thumbnail. Again, look where the strings are still going. This is not normal for a recreational player, but the, every single pro is going to hit this checkpoint right here. So see how his strings are facing opposite that way. And the elbow, if we kind of go out here, the elbow is kind of attached to the tennis ball. That's another good drill people can do where you can toss the ball and try and let the ball come down and, and hit your elbow just, just for practice so you can get this, this move that he's got right here. Okay. Um, and then watch how long he can still see if he looks up. He can barely see his thumbnail now. Now he's starting to push away. Then when he hits the ball, now this is the first time his thumbnail would be facing out the opposite way. So he went to go look for the thumbnail. It wouldn't be there. And then he's going to fall into the court and do that little scorpion kick which I don't think is necessary for a lot of recreational players out there. Copying that would probably throw most players off balance. That's kind of a move for some elite juniors that they might want to copy to get a little more power on that serve, a little more explosiveness. I want to take a look at another angle, and then I want to explain how anyone can get perfect technique. Now, can anybody serve exactly like her cats and have all that power? No, that's not what I'm claiming. But if you want to have all the checkpoints that he's hitting that we're going through in this video, anybody can do that if they really want to. Okay, so now another view of what I was talking about is how pronounced that secret power source says, look at those strings face right down to the ground, okay? So just copy that. Even start here. I think this is a great position just to start from in a half serve position so you can really get the idea of doing this. And another thing I want you to uh, focus on that I was talking about is, again, look how he's really stretching in this area of his body. And then look at his tossing arm. I like to call this the windy tree, like he's a tree being blown over, okay? So here's the nice tree right here, all right? Um, so see if you can get into that position because a lot of recreational players, which also gives them trouble on their toss and has them hit a lot of service in the net, their tossing arm is bent. We want it straight up and even really stretching back if you can. All right, now the next thing I want to focus on is the toss height. And why I want to focus on the toss height is actually to kind of tell you, hey, maybe we don't want to copy the Hercats toss because look how high that is. There's the absolute height of his toss. That's where the ball is. And now it's going to start to come down. Okay, well, it's going up a little higher actually. And now it's coming down. So watch how far it comes down before he strikes the ball. Boom. Now he strikes the ball. So we'll just draw a little line through there. That is a long way to fall. So I don't recommend that for most recreational players. That's tough timing. Okay, so this is really takes a lot of timing in order to have a ball fall that far off the top. Um to have it hit every time. Think about windy days. Think about being nervous. Think about the the amount of timing it takes to put all that together. So it works for him. We're obviously not going to tell him to change it. He's got the best serve on tour. So it's not something where I'm recommending like, oh, you better change that toss height. But for recreational players to copy that, no. I think what you want to do is if I were to say, hey, if you're saying, well, how high should I toss it then? Just a little bit over your reach. So basically like somewhere right around there is probably ideal. So when that ball reaches the top and stops of your toss, that's when you can start to accelerate and go. And then by the time the ball falls just a little bit, it should be at the top of your string bed. Um, so there you go. And then we'll take a look at how far into the court he goes. So very athletic looking serve there. And look how he's well into the court with this follow through. Another thing I want you to, another thing I want you to focus on is uh, so many players on the tour when they're done, they're reaching back. Their non-dominant hand is reaching back towards the fence. So people are copying that and throwing themselves off balance. But what I want you to notice, Hercat says that too at the end. But what you really want to copy 
is what's called the tuck. Look at this. Look how he's tucking. Ooh, wrong drawing tool there. Um, look how he's tucking his arm in. Okay. So focus on the tuck. That's really good. That keeps you from over rotating. So he's tucking right there on the hit. Okay. Look how long he holds that tuck. Then as he lands, he releases and reaches back. So there's a quick analysis of her cat serve. This is the best serve of 2023. I think it's probably going to be the best serve of 2024. Maybe Ben Shelton can give him a run. Let me know who you think has the best serve on tour. But now what I want to get into is how all these steps that he does, it comes down to training and not talent. And I've got a free seven-day serve challenge that I want you to really uh, take seriously and go through because it takes you through step-by-step -step progressions so you can do what's called a deep focus practice. That's going to be the key to you really getting the serve of your dreams. It's not going to be watching analysis videos and going, now I understand, I can go do it. No, it's about the focus, deep focus reps that you need to take, the progressions that you need to break everything down that I have in the seven day serve challenge. I'm going to explain in this quick little video, which is from the talent code, or it's a summary of the talent code that explains how you can become really talented, apparently talented in the world with anything you want to do, but through deep focus practice. So take a listen to this. Then I'm going to have a preview of the seven day serve challenge. If that all sounds good to you, sign up 100% free. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching, uh, and I can't wait to get your serve to that next level. The content of this video is based on the talent code by Dan Coyle. You might believe that some people are just born talented, and that's how they became successful. Well, the author of this book wants to change your mind. He set out on a journey to visit so-called talent hotbeds, small places that produce an abnormal amount of highly successful people, to learn about what created extremely talented individuals. What he discovered was that there were three elements to the talent code, the first one being deep practice. To understand what happens during deep practice, we need to learn about myelin. Every human movement, thought, or feeling is a precisely timed electric signal traveling through a specific chain of neurons in the brain. Cells called astrocytes sense the nerve firing, which stimulates another cell called oligodendrocyte to wrap myelin around the fiber. The more the nerve fires, the more myelin wraps around it and the faster the signals travel, increasing velocities up to 100 times over fibers that are not myelinated. When you practice a skill, what you are actually doing is laying down myelin, which results in you becoming better at firing those signals and executing that skill properly. Myelin equals skill. The more we develop a skill, or rather, myelinate a neural circuit, the less aware we are that we're using it. It becomes automatic. The conclusion of the book was this diagram that includes the three elements of the talent code. Ignition and lots of deep practice, usually facilitated by master coaching, results in extreme talent. It's time to develop a serve with massive power and spin without giving up your accuracy or consistency. Without having to spend hours and hours on the court every day for the rest of your life and without having to spend thousands of dollars on lessons that just don't work. My name is Peter Freeman. I'm the founder of Crunch Time Coaching. You may have seen my serve videos on YouTube where I have over 8 million views. Or maybe you've seen me interview the great Rick Macy, Gigi Fernandez, or Rod Laver with my tennis con event that features the very best coaches in the world in an effort to get your game to the next level. Or maybe you've already experienced one of my online training courses. Either way, I'm just a passionate coach who loves helping totally obsessed tennis players get on stud and get to the next level in their tennis journey. So if you want to finally separate the truth from the lies, throw out all the junk and clutter that just holds your game back, you have come to the right place. After playing and coaching now for nearly 40 years, I've compiled everything you need to do to transform your serve this year into a seven day serve obsession challenge. You see, I focus solely on the totally obsessed adult tennis player. Players who want the latest cutting edge instruction proven to get results that local coaches either don't know or they refuse to teach. I have now helped 7,332 totally obsessed tennis players inside my training programs and I'm going to help you too. Introducing the 7 day serve obsession challenge right now for only one buck. 
Yes, you heard that right. It's only $1 right now. You can enroll and join hundreds of other totally obsessed tennis players just like you live over the next seven days to finally unlock that power you didn't know you had, gain control and spin you've been missing for years, and turn your serve into a true weapon that dominates in match play. When you enroll for the challenge, you're going to unlock $1,068 worth of value for just one buck. Your challenge includes a seven-day step-by-step video coaching system, perfect practice plan drill sheets, live coaching and support, plus I'm throwing in a free bonus, my very best serving lessons currently only available to VIP members. And not to mention, there's also going to be awarded over $1,000 in catch award prizes during my seven-day serve session challenge. So if you are sick and tired of hitting your serve like an amateur and not having the confidence to keep swinging freely regardless of scoreboard pressure, the time is now. You've tried the private lessons that cost tons of money with lackluster results, or you've signed up for dozens of online coaching programs that didn't work, and you're ready to stop the vicious cycle of disappointment and finally learn a simple, doable method that works for myself and for my students. The time is now. Enter your information and enroll now. It's an insane $1,060 value for just one buck. If this is finally where your serve transformation begins, wouldn't it be worth it? It's time to develop a serve with massive power and spin without giving up your accuracy or consistency, without having to spend hours and hours on the court every day for the rest of your life, and without having to spend thousands of dollars on lessons that just don't work. My name is Peter Freeman. I'm the founder of Crunch Time Coaching. You may have seen my serve videos on YouTube where I have over 8 million views. Or maybe you've seen me interview the great Rick Macy, Gigi Fernandez, or Rod Laver. If you want to finally separate the truth from the lies, throw out all the junk and clutter that just holds your game back, you have come to the right place. After playing and coaching now for nearly 40 years, I've compiled everything you need to do to transform your serve this year into a seven day serve obsession challenge. It's an insane $1,060 value. If this is finally where your serve transformation begins, wouldn't it be worth it?